Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven-Kelly for Beeducation.com. And I'm Mel McKay with Beeducation.com. We just shot this great class over on Facebook Live, our Beeducation Live show, but we've edited it and archived it here for you to watch. If you hear us answering customer questions or talking to quest talking to customers, you can just ignore that. That was just stuff that was in the moment when we shot the class, but there's still so much great content here. Yeah, but if you have questions while you're watching this archive, go ahead and leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching through our site, just toss us an email at classes at beachcation.com. And we'll get back to you with an answer. Yeah, let's get into the video. Karen is going to show us today how to do ornaments with pictures. In yes. It. So ultimately, Talk us through a little bit. we're going to use some pretty great blanks. We have copper, pewter, nickel, brass. We have every, I mean, I think we have so many different types of ready-made blanks and we're going to punch or saw pictures out to pretty much make little mini picture frames. Look how cute! And it'll be a great Ooh. memento for a lifetime. Like this is something... Um, well, one of the things that inspired me is I remember that my parents have some mini picture frames with my picture from kindergarten. I'm 38, so we're looking at that many years later, and I still That's love it. so cute. So this is kind of passing it on, passing on the tradition. And probably the one that you have is just a plain old ready-made picture frame, not a handmade one. Oh, I actually think it's made out of cardboard, and it's falling apart. So I oh, like, like in kindergarten class. Yes, okay, so cute. this is so like, cute. this one is gorgeous. Like, this is the type that I probably would have paid $50 for, or would. Nice, but nice. since I make it, I don't, <laughs> then I don't have to pay $50. And we're going to show you some of the ones that Taryn's been working on at home. These are her actual gifts for her friends, and they're amazing. This one is a really simple... Um, circle blank. It's our largest, or Beeducation's largest circle blank. And I just stamped this one with um, a number of different design stamps and a couple letter in. stamps too. I'm going to move it to the middle so we can zoom in on it. Isn't that cute? That Mel, That's Mel's little daughter. That's really so sweet. sweet. And then we tell, go... Tell, tell them about the stitching or are you going to cover that later? Oh sure, no, that's ahead. great. So, um, and also you can see there's S's and V's. This is a great way to use your letter stamps for design, for design purposes and create beautiful um, repetitive designs. And then I just did um, a little hole. Um, it looks like I did six holes. And then I could stitch up through the blank and down through the photograph and that holds it in place. And then this one, it's backed with paper. Mm -hmm. um, and then I could do a little note, like Christmas 2016. So this is last year. Um, this year, every year we're growing and learning. This year I was smart and was able to make it even more personal. I was smart. <laughs> this year <laughs> this I'm This year smart. I'm smart. I have no idea how that happened since I have a newborn. I don't have any thoughts in my head other than my baby's crying. But this year, I, um, I got the beautiful tattoo font. Oh my gosh, I love it so oh, much. It's so good. So all of these... It's a fan favorite, oh, for sure. And I got the number set, too. So I love how this says Dominic 2017. And then I backed it with leather. But when my sister showed me this one with the paper, the paper is a lot easier. And I realized I think I'm going to be backing the rest of them in paper. Um... And this I just glued. Um, so you could stitch it, you could glue it, you could tape it, you could probably rivet it. Um, there's a lot of different Cute. ways to close it. Um, this year we're using hot glue because things need to be done a little faster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we need to speed up the process. So, and then I'm going to shift over to this blank. Um, it's like a traditional ornament as well. So we have the Christmas tree. And of course we have the per, the circle. So we have River 2017, and then we'll put a little picture there. Um, and moving along, we also have this beautiful heart. Um, this one I kind of messed up, but it goes to show, go, you know, it doesn't. But you keep saying that and I've yet to find the mess up. I kind of, I don't like how they, um, it, it's too close to, it says baby's first Christmas, but the Christmas got a little bit punched out by the whole, by the... Oh, got it, got it. Um, yeah, no. But you can see, don't, still don't see once, <laughs> once you put a picture in there, it's going to be fine. Oh, you know, yeah. That'll so be great. Cute. There's oh my, my father-in-law, Dan. Oh my gosh, look how cute Three that handsome little is. devils. Then, um, I also, uh, there's a couple different, let's see. Ooh, getting tongue-tied looking at the different ones. This is a tried-and-true favorite. 
This is a copper tree. This comes in a number of different metals. Yes. And I just did the large kismet font all the way down. Yeah, cute. And then I kind of started doing circles and mandala stamping around it. I love this piece of. Oh, it's so cute what you did with it. Little decorations, and then I just kind of hit a name in there, Sage. So if you guys have our book, you'll remember that Taryn is kind of the mandala stamping queen. She also has a couple classes on our site. And, I mean, mandala stamping, I think of like a circle and then doing like patterns, you know, from the inside out or outside in, and, it, and it's so much fun. But then remember, like, you can do it on a Christmas tree or on a dove or on an ornament, and it looks so cool. It's the same... It's the same concept, right, as far as lining everything up yes. and, and growing out from there. Absolutely. And this, these actually, if I were to show, like, the this one, this one, and this one, they're three different ways. This is just kind of working with the blank. So I started stamping there and growing mm -hmm. versus here's a name, and then I created a circle, and then I stamped out. So this is a little more true mandala style. Cute. And then this one, I created lines kind of that mimicked um, like oh, a circle like to create a, like a rounder pattern. Mm -hmm. um, this one is really fun. If you're not personalizing it, then you can do some really beautiful designs. Mm -hmm. And then when you stamp it out, um, I luckily realized you create a pretty exciting um, like charm or a little necklace pendant. Okay, so people are probably wondering that, like, did you punch it and then stamp it, but you did, is that the one that goes in there? Yeah, that's the one that goes Maybe in there. Just like that. Oh my gosh, look at that, it's like a puzzle. Okay, so you did the <laughs> whole thing, and then you cut it out with the disc cutter. Exactly, and I think this one goes to this one. This is a fun, or you keep it for your little kids for a puzzle. <laughs> that one Cover goes up their to face. there. It's like you could build like a little door. <laughs> you could. <laughs> now we're getting crazy. Yeah, so I mean, I see where you're going with that because then when you punch it, everything is so crisp. Whereas, right, if you had done the letters or the stamps, it would like push in the middle or you'd only get half a stamp. Absolutely. It looks so good. Absolutely. So you could do it either way. Like Lisa said, if you ended up stamping it first, I'm sorry, if you ended up punching the hole out first, you could create. You could use it to your advantage and create little divots or little scallops. Mm. Or then, like, you could build from there. Out. Yes. Oh, I just launched. No, it's perfect. Indie, sorry. I oh, like, no. I kind of like the crisp Dominant. circle in the chaos. I agree. And then, like you said, like, hi, necklace. Yes. Like, so cute. <laughs> or earrings or whatever. Or, you know, like we've shown in other Facebook Lives, cut this in half. Then you have two best friend necklaces or you have oh, earrings, yeah. right? Just put chain on the top. There's so much you can do. So keep that in mind when you punch this stuff out, be pretty particular about it because you can keep it and use it for other designs, right? Yes. So cool. I love two for ones. Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. All right. So should we move on to? Yeah. You want to? Okay. The... So here, let's, if you're going to stamp on this guy, right? So let's do this. This is one that's in the process. So if you're doing it personalized, unfortunately, you don't get the ready-made lovely necklace, but you get a perfect oh, yeah. pewter circle so you can then stamp it later. If you're going to do it personalized, what I did was I drew a circle. I made sure it was within the same size of the disc cutter. So I like, I have a circle finder, but I just made sure I drew it. And you could just trace the disc if you wanted, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You could trace the disc and then you have your little circle. And then I stamped, it's hard to tell because it's not oxidized, but it says Kodiak. That's your baby. That's the new baby, Here, 2017. Um, and then, so when I do cut this, I want to be really careful not to uh, disc cut out any of the words. Yeah, Taryn had mentioned that's how she does it, and I thought I would probably screw that up. I would probably cut no. it and then stamp on the edge. But yeah, her point was then you could like end up pushing the metal in. It's, it's I mean, you could you could do it either way, whatever you're more comfortable with. But this this makes a lot of sense. I think I'm gonna go home now and do it the other way too, and then maybe we could post see, later pictures. Yeah. I mean, if that did happen, right? So let me repeat what I'm talking about. If you punched this out first and then stamped around the edge, and we have plenty of videos on stamping on a curve. Look at our um, live videos here. I think it's a couple months back. And then if you did end up pushing it in or distorting the metal at all, you could file it back out. You could. With a half round file to soften it. Although I do like, I think it looks beautiful, the organic 
ways in which the metal kind of comes out. So you, you yeah, can't I mean, that go would wrong. Look, that would look really cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You cool. can't go wrong. Especially, like, I think that pewter stamps, so lovely. So you just have, I bet you'd have some beautiful scallops. Okay, you grab some stamps to stamp that in here, and I'm going to look at questions real quick. Okay. We have so many people saying, hey, Hello. they're excited about ornaments. There's my sister. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Yay! Beautiful and creative is what Gigi says to you. Oh, that makes me happy. I'm going to grab... Oh, and look at Tina. She loves this idea. She still has her picture ornament from her, from her kids on her tree. And now she can make stamped ones. Yay. Yeah, fun. So Good. I do a center line, and I'm going to grow up, grow my stamping up, and then I'm going to grow it down from that stamp line. Good? Yeah. Here, let me zoom out a little so it doesn't freak out on the focus. Oh, very, very close. Looks great. This is fun because you don't have to be that precise because there's not a ton of space and it's going to look beautiful regardless. I think. What's that? The little half Oh, yes. Sun. This is our half, um, what do we call this? Half heart. Half heart. Or buns. Buns. <laughs> <laughs> Buns. Like buns. <laughs> buns of pewter. <laughs> Sparkly buns. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Awesome. And that stamp, just off topic, we have a heart that has these rays coming out from it, and Taryn tilted it and used it in this way a bunch, and we loved it so much that we just had a stamp made of, of that. It made me so happy. She's so good. <laughs> She's our inspiration. Aw. Makes me so happy when a stamp is then, like, then I don't have to tilt and tap. I just get to yeah. use it without thinking. Oh, I love this one. So this is a four solid dots and it just fills in really well. All of the tiny embellishments are some of my favorite things to put in, to create little lines or fill in negative space. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you toss them up there and we will chat with you. I'm going to grab, um, what do we call this? Is this a pointed oval or? I think it's like a... Leaf. leaf. I'm just going to fill it right in on the ends there. And then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do the bottom side. And if at any point when you're stamping and you think, that's it, this is perfect, stop. You yeah. don't have to keep going. It's just kind of my, I love things to be kind of, um, well, I love things to have a lot of design. I like exotic. I think it looks beautiful. You're so good at it. Well, thank you. I'm going to do more of the um, arches. The Are they Moroccan arches? Yes. They are so beautiful. I love them. You designed them. You <laughs> literally drew them, and we made them into stamps. Well, that's embarrassing. I didn't mean to say that. Why not? Well, I do love them. Thank you for making They're them. They're awesome, because I made them. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll do the leaf again. Then let's do one more of the rays of the heart, buns of pewter. Buns of pewter. Although this is a steel, this is steel, right? Yeah. So buns on pewter. Buns on pewter. Maybe we'll round it out and match it. All right, so. That's okay, let me get a little close up before we move on so people can see. So yeah, we're doing ornaments with pictures, but we thought why not show a little bit of the stamping. And you can see it's kind of gotten a little a bent out of shape. Um, one of the things I do is not I will too put... Not actually. What's that? Not too bad. No, I guess it's not. But I like to put a piece of leather down. I'll turn it upside down and then I'll hit it with a, with a plastic mallet or I do this. I use the other side of... The, not the metal side, I'll use this side. Give it a few wallops, and then it flattens it right out. I know, I still need to tell the people at Impress Art that you do that, because it's really smart. It's one of my favorite things of that tool. All right, so at this point, we could, we are ready to punch that hole out. So I'm gonna use the disc cutter, or I guess we would say cut that, cut the hole out. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this off, 
Yes. I'm going to put, there's a nice plastic um, sheet. What would, or a, yeah, it's like a, I don't know what they call it, but it's a, this is a protective thing that comes vinyl? with the disc cutter. It's very thick and it's to protect your table. It helps a little bit with sound, but I like to put it right on my sandbag and then put the disc cutter right on top of that. You have this right here. And that really helps with sound. If you've ever done a disc cutter, it's so loud. Um, <laughs> honestly, me, I put it on the floor and do it, but we don't have that, that option here. It's really loud. Like if, if you're new to disc cutting, just know that you're supposed to make a lot of noise. You're supposed to. Oh, it's yeah. supposed to it be. It takes a lot of oomph. Yes, it does. So there's this, um, what would you call this? That's like the screw that it has an official name, but it's it's what opens and closes it. Okay. Here, what is the name? Okay, see how that's open? That's you want to open it up to put your metal in, but you don't want to leave it open. You want to pull it down like that on top of your metal, so that it holds it nice and sturdy before you punch. And I noticed Taryn is so good. She just went and grabbed her her Can I show you her eyes. Uh, <laughs> Hi! <laughs> she put on her protective eyewear. I'm definitely covering Smart. my eyes. Do you want to do this or should I? No, wait, okay. no, get in there. So we have our little marking. I'm going to use the largest, largest hole. I think I screwed it I'm going to open this up. And then you can see as you slide it in, when you look at it, you want to fit it right within your circle lines. So I'm going to flatten it out so I can do that. Um, just kind of... So we have a couple comments while you're doing that. Yusenia says, you're a creative genius. Aww, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we've got someone asking about the stamps. I think we have a wavy line stamp. You can look for that. It's a, I think she used the curve. And Tammy asks, would it be easier to cut the hole and then stamp. Sorry if that question was from earlier because we just talked about that, but right, you can do either way. It depends on the look you're going for, right? This is lube cutter. This is the, or cut lube. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to rub yeah, the, the dowel on it. We put this in place there. And this has been tightened down completely, nice and tight. And Lisa brought the two pound hammer Big baby. This is gonna get loud and it's gonna be a really loud wallop. Are you it's guys ready? Not too bad on the sand. Oh, I've never done it. This is did exciting. You screw it down on yes. The... Yeah, sorry I wasn't looking. Pay attention. Here we go. We ready? And I you just keep you keep hitting until this goes through the metal and you kind of feel it. You'll a... feel it, yeah. Yes. So there it is. It went all the way through. We'll look. See? So had this been had this had a lot of beautiful designs, you'd have be done with your pendant. Yeah. As it is now, I have a lovely pewter circle that I can use later. Perfect. We'll put that back in place. Open it up and voila! Now here's the beauty about the Pepe disc cutter, and we've talked about it a little bit before. This is the only one that, that I sell that I endorse. I've had cheaper ones and they, they come like this and they don't screw shut just have a big huge opening and what happens you end up like kind of denting the metal through it's horrible and then or the punch gets stuck in there anyway i have a lot of door stops that used to be hole punch or disc cutters but the other thing is you know taryn screwed this down nice and tight on the metal it has to hold it tight i mean you don't want to like but just just so it's you know sandwiched it but there's no scratches like it's no. so well made on the inside that's why it's expensive honestly it's a very very well made precision tool it's made in the united states um, and look, there's like no scratches on this. It's just perfect. Oh, they're beautiful. And it's so nice that then the other part is usable as well. I mean, then you have a circle blank. It's perfect. Yes. Um, love it. Something to keep in mind, I was just thinking about. If you're doing odd shapes, which they pretty much all are at some point, like this heart, you'll notice depending on where you're going to use the disc cutter, you might have to shift your blank to fit it because um, if it's too large of a um, too large of a blank, then it might not um, clear the dowel. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like this, you can't get the hole, but if you rotate it, so you just have to be so you're a little limited. But just think like, okay, is there another way that this will work? And then if you're doing a circle, it has to fit within a certain um, right, right. size with this 
Screw down dowel. And Tina agrees. She says she loves that hole punch because it gives a clean cut every time. And it lasts forever. Um, the other thing too, I mean, we should point out is if you don't have that, you certainly can draw it, pierce it, and saw it out. Absolutely. Easy peasy. So if in that case, if you guys haven't done that before, you would have, okay, uh, okay, let's say you wanted to do it on this one and you had a circle. You would punch a hole, you'd thread your saw blade through it, and then attach it to your saw so that you're literally inside, and then you would cut out that hole. Very easy, especially in pewter, because it's so soft. Oh, yes. But this, I mean, it's so clean, and it's so great. And if you do have this tool, go for it. This is pretty much like magic. Sawing is great. Sawing is amazing. It's not quite magic. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so you're like, right. You just have to use your thought, you use your brain a little more. <laughs> but it's, yes. So this is, this is the process for that, and then we would then darken it. Shall we darken it? No. Nah, okay. I didn't know how to do that. Oh, for the last thing for putting a hole in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple things. You could use the smallest here on the disc cutter, punch a hole. Love that. I actually, I did use that with, um, yeah, some right. of the, yeah, some of the pewter, like this one, um, was a little too large to use. Um, like a hole punch plier? Exactly. Or a screw down? Exactly. So I just use a power punch. Um, I think the screw down does work. Um, I also, I was just saying one of my favorite tools that I use, um, this is the easy rivet. It's the economy riveter. And my, the reason I love it is because this is the widest widest uh part to punch your hole so you can really see very well like what you're punching um and i have had this i guess i've had it about three years and i've only had to do exchange the parts um or what am i trying to say not exchange them trade them out yeah if it, if it just got old or yes because they sell, sell replacements they sell i replace i've only had to replace it once i think in about four years oh my gosh and you used it on every project in the book yes that you did, right? exactly so are you saying so we could that just, you don't rivet with this you just use it for the whole punch side? exactly cool. i i pretty much i rarely rivet when i do it it works great but i can see right here where i'm going to punch this hole and i can just go and punch it. Should we yeah, use this so or should we do a bigger here, hole with the here's larger the one? the other one. Let's show them exactly what you're talking about. So like you're talking about the reach in here isn't very far. And but that one's oh in the depth. And though. the depth. So oh, we're looking cool. at the height. So let's like see how you get like double the yes. height. And then you can kind of see better. Yes. And so this one like I'm not going to but if I wanted to do a hole that deep I could versus like this one I can only do a hole doot, that deep. So it's just, I wish, I wish they'd consult with me and trade these to become as <laughs> versatile as this. It's pretty awesome. But Lisa also pointed out there's another screw down hole punch. Would you like to show them for this? We could yeah, do this a is larger a, one. This is a tool, and again, not a sales pitch, you guys. It's just, this dude doesn't get used very often and spoken about, and I think it's an unsung hero of the site. This is a screw down hole punch, but you can slide in your blank or whatever you're punching through all the way through and you can line this guy up the back plate the guide adjusts you know you can get it at some I'm holding it with one hand so it's a little awkward exact spot right so that every time you're punching a hole you slide it in it hits that back plate and so every hole if you're doing a straight line of holes whatever will will line up perfectly which is amazing to me because i'm horrible at that and then or you just use the if you're doing like 20 pendants and you want the hole in the same place you set yeah, it and you just perfect. keep you're yes, like production yes. and you just you screw it down with um the allen wrench so i just do it by hand until i hit the metal and then use the wrench either in direction or this direction to screw and punch through and it's very very clean hole and it's three different size holes there's a 1 16th the 1 8th and the 3 32nd so you could do that to punch holes. You could use your power punch. You could use your hole punch pliers. We're just giving you options so that you've, I know you have one of these at home. So now you don't have to go shopping. You can use whatever Will the hole punch have. pliers go through the, the pewter? On some of them. Okay. Yeah, it will go on uh, through on this one. I've used it. What happened on mine, because I had so much padding here, because, and again, this is padding that I put there because sometimes the stem that the punch is coming out of, it mars the um, yes the metal, so I put a little padding here. So sometimes if you punch it, it doesn't go all the way through. It kind of like the part you punch through kind of sticks out here, and I just grab it with my pliers and rip it off and file. Easy peasy. Oh, that works. It's awesome. 
Okay, so I'll let you come back over here. And sure, while you're doing you. that, um, Rebecca mentioned I have a saw. Now I just need to know how to attach the blade. Rebecca, if you go to the saw blade or saw frame product on our website, there's a video. So we show you, and we also have two classes on sawing. So in those classes and in the video, we show how to attach the blade for just regular sawing or for piercing when you're in the inside of the metal. So check it out, girl. All right, so punch in the hole, punch in the hole. Gonna back it out. Easy peasy. There it is. Yeah, that's great. Janice asks if, um, Okay, so first of all, she says her screw down hole punch is almost dead, in which case, Janice, you can just get replacement punches. I doubt the, the bulk of the tool is dead, but replacement punches are awesome and inexpensive. And with that and this one that Taryn's using, you can absolutely go through aluminum because it's so oh, um, yeah. soft. You can go probably 14 gauge aluminum. Yeah, that's great. So should we talk about the picture? Should we talk about Do putting... it. All right. I have or the tree. So this is my one of this one's going to be for my family. This is my kids school picture. He's so cute. I love it. Look at his little face. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. So I'm going to um you can start by just even I'm going to um kind of do some guides like that. So I know I'm just going to do a rough circle first. Smart. So you don't cut it Exactly. I was thinking, oh, she's going to cut the exact hole, but that'd be stupid because then it won't stay. So I just did a rough, a really rough um, circle. So it goes like that. And you just, oh uh, you just gosh, want it to be smaller than the blank, right? You don't want it to be sticking out there. You just want it to be smaller than the blank. And then you can either drill a hole and stitch it in place, put a little bit of hot glue here, and we're going to glue that there. And then... I have this paper. So for the paper, I'll put this over here for a second. I'm gonna just put it um, the right side down. We'll move our picture for a sec. And now I'm going to use a pencil. We're gonna make a little bit of a um, trace it yeah, trace a little stencil here. Janice clarified, she said that the threads are stripping on her tool. I've never seen that happen, girl. You have been doing a lot of punching. <laughs> and Melissa's asking, what do you use for your padding? Are you talking about this guy, Melissa? This is a sandbag um, that we sell in a couple different sizes and shapes. Clarify if that's not what you're specifically asking about. I'm gonna cut inside the lines because obviously since I traced it, it's a little bit bigger than the blank because the pencil is on the outside. And it doesn't have to be perfect. How often do you look at the back of your ornament? Yeah. We have another quick question here. Sahar is asking, would you recommend getting power punch or drill down hole puncher? Um, by drill down, I think you mean screw down, correct me if I'm wrong, and the difference between the two are, are really, they're very different, not only in the way that they work, but the holes that they punch. So it really depends what you're looking for. Um, power punch gives a lot more options of small to bigger holes, um, and the screw down hole punch just has two options, but it's less expensive. So I guess it's, it's really what you need and what you're looking for. Oh, Melissa, sorry, she clarified. So she's asking about the padding on the punch right here. This is just cardstock. I just bend it over a bunch of times, or maybe it's a piece of, um, sometimes I use a pro polish pad. I just cut a little square and punch it through. So anything right there, squishy, I mean, a couple layers of tape or, or cardstock would totally work. I am actually so lazy, if you can, remember, if you can envision this. I will take my pro polish, and I will just go like this and rip it. And it Perfect. usually stays in place. Like you just punch it and rip it and it gives you a little bit of padding. That's not lazy, that's smart. Well, thank you. And very <laughs> fast. <laughs> but I am I am too lazy to find a piece of um, or scissors and cut it. Yeah, All right. and Tina mentioned that as well as paper, the leather or felt would work too, which you did on a couple of these, but you like the paper better, right? Well, I found, so I did bring some felt and it was just... I don't know. I think fabric scissors would have helped. And again, I was too lazy to find those. I would just have whatever was in the garage. <laughs> Probably either one, right? Yes. So felt would be great. Leather would be great. Fabric would be great. Paper. 
Um, and then once you have it cut, just kind of make sure it fits because you can trim anything. And then you're in a good place to glue that and then you can write a little note, you know, or, or leave it blank. So the one thing we didn't bring is the hot glue. So you have to, this is where we get to all use our imaginations. But it's not hard because that looks pretty, pretty done. There we go. So cute. Let me zoom in. Then I'm going to set it a little nicer. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> ah. Mel, we need you to come sing. I think she's taking Where care of my Mel? baby. Oh, she's gone. Oh. Look how cute that is. And you can always trim and it. I just messed trim. up your paper, no. but I just, whoa, hello. Hi, Indy. Hi, Indy. <laughs> it's so cute. That's so sweet. So what I would, if, if I were, well, I am doing this, I would definitely get a number set because I think it's really nice to punch in the year. Because oh, I think yeah, in yeah, 20 years you're going to be like, when was this? And I know this was 2017. Super cute. Good idea. Um, I'm just going back a comment and someone had asked about the wavy lines on the top here and I'd said that you use the wavy, um, but that's not true. This wavy line right here actually comes in the ornament. Yes. <laughs> so that's the one part that she didn't stamp. We don't have a blank one, but the ornament comes, I think with this line, oops, this line, that line, and this wavy line and the wavy line down here too. So that's what it looks like blank. And it's really fun because you can stamp with it. Like it gives you a little bit of practice with stamping with inlines or yeah, creating yeah. designs with existing yeah. um, imprints that are already there. I love it. So here's the other one. So there they are again, the lines, the wavy line at the top, two lines there, and there's that wavy line at the bottom. Yes. But we do have a curve that you could you could build that with, right? Yes. That little, it's like, I think we use it for parentheses. Okay, well, we still have the camera down. Let me take a look at questions. What font is that? That is the tattoo. Tattoo. And we just got tattoo numbers. Oh, I love it. So you guys that are new to the tattoo font, I think we're sold out right now at the time of this filming. But if you're watching the replay, we likely have it um, back in stock within the next couple of weeks or months, probably. Um, cute for baby's first Christmas. Absolutely. Yes, this one, I, the, so the circle I actually stamped. You can stamp baby's first gotcha. Christmas. Gotcha. Sahar had clarified. She did not mean the screw down hole punch. She meant the bench top drill press. So again, two really, really different tools to clarify what she's asking about the, is which would you get the power punch or the drill press that it's, it's a little one, look it up on the site. It's, it's awesome. But so for the drill press, it's, um, you plug it in, it spins a drill and pops it down. It's really, really easy. Like I use that a ton. Do you use that? You don't have that, do you? I mean, it's just like using a handheld drill, except it's straight up and down. Yeah. So you have to have the different bits. You have to know exactly what you want to saw. So I don't know that I can, Sahar, give you a recommendation of one or the other because they're so different. Though I will tell you, though, that the um, the power punch, and you guys look it up if you're wondering what we're talking about, it, it makes large holes. So um, the power punch with is this, also... With the drill press, it'd be hard. I mean, yes, you could use a huge drill bit but i think it's the power reasonable. punch like the power punch i think is reasonable for the amount of tool you get like i i'm a pretty frugal person and the power punch was one of the first um punch tools that i got because it can stamp small it can stamp large not as large as the pepe disc cutter sure. um and it's very easy like it works really well um it's a great tool that's not going to break the screw down the drill press is awesome but there are a lot of alternatives, like if you have a Dremel or if you have a, um, like even a power drill. Yeah, just a regular old drill. So I think, up and... I think that the bench, um, a bit. the bench drill press is a fantastic tool if you're doing a ton of production. Yeah. If you're only doing this like a couple times for fun, that wouldn't be the first. That, that would wouldn't be, be your first, first your first yeah. guess. No. Just fixing the camera a little bit. But if you're loving this, then I really don't say no to any tool. Like I, <laughs> if it's going to help me, it's going to, I mean, it even at this point, it comes to my health. Like my hands are important. My back is important. And I want to have tools that are going to make things easier. Yeah. So, Especially if you're doing this, like for a living, you're doing, you're cranking a ton out. 
that's something that you just go vroom, vroom, vroom. it's great makes sense what i haven't even told you yet is we're getting extra bits to the power punch soon it's a it's an extra one that does a 1.5 hole so oh. it's even smaller than comes with the kit so you'll buy the additional one they're coming soon which is exciting that's it. thank you so much for letting me join you guys again this week because i i really look forward to coming out into the world and checking in with fellow creatives oh, so she's thank you so good we're so lucky to have her i mean look at these ornaments i would have never come up with that oh, just thank you. brilliant so i won't see you so happy holidays i hope you guys all have a great holiday with awesome handmade gifts. And will you come back in the new year and do more stuff? Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Thank All you. right, that's it. We're out of here. Thanks, everybody.